welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit more lighthearted and fun and fast. So <laughs> I decided to do a personal Q&A, get to know me. So I'll just answer some really quick fun facts about me, in case you're wondering. Um, so <laughs> the first one, I don't even think my own friends know this. I'll close my eyes so you can see that I'm not looking at anything or cheating. Um, my weirdest talent is that I can say the alphabet backwards. <laughs> I've memorized it all these years. <laughs> so, Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C V A. <laughs> okay, number two. My three worst injuries. I chose three because I actually had three really bad ones. Number one, uh, so I was 17 years old living in Alice Springs, Australia, and I was working as a breakfast chef. My shifts were so crazy. I'd do 6.30 p.m. till 11.30 p.m. in the restaurant, have a half hour break, midnight till 4 a.m. in the morning in the nightclub, walk home, have a bowl of cereal, get dressed in my chef's uniform, then do 5 a.m. till 10 a.m. working as a breakfast chef. That was at age 17. Uh, but I just bought this brand new chef's knife and it came with a case and stuff, but I didn't have a car in the desert. So I had to carry it home somehow. So I wrapped it in my jacket because there's um, uh, lots of dangerous people around and <laughs> I didn't want anything to happen. But then when I was walking, the knife slipped out of the case as I adjusted my handbag. And as I took a step, it sliced my leg open. Um... I forgot to put a graphical warning because I'll add a photo to this. Uh, graphic. This is graphic material. <laughs> um, so I sliced my leg open. I was on the side of the road bleeding out and this man had to call the ambulance for me. Um, and yeah, it was quite hectic. I had no family over there or anything. And then literally within two weeks, I went to my manager's place after work, after working in the restaurant. And there was this little dog there. It was a medium sized dog. And I I was on the couch and I bent over to rub its shoulders and I must have just gotten a fright that I was a stranger and I got bitten in the face by a dog. So I've got makeup on now, but I do have teeth marks actually in my chin, just tiny little scars there. Oops, just tiny little scars there. Um, so I hooked on, it got locked, or I had to open its mouth with my hands and go to hospital while my leg was still effed up as well. Uh, so those were both very hectic. And then when I was in Auckland, I was in bed one night and I wanted to watch a movie and have, I think it was a cup of soup. And I just heated it up on the stove till it was boiling, obviously. And then we had this cat. It was a rescue cat. And then I think I put my soup down and then went to press play on my laptop to play the video and then the cap jumped jumped into the soup and flipped it onto me and I actually burnt my whole butt cheek and all the skin peeled off I had a scar the size of my whole butt cheek I I don't know what level of degree burns it was but I was screaming down the whole neighborhood because it was about midnight I was in the cold bath I couldn't even get out of the bath to get into the ambulance they had to give me painkillers right there and then like, oh, it was so bad. And I was really, really upset about it and self-conscious because I was doing bikini modeling and now I had this huge, and it was number one, very painful. And I had to go to the doctors to get the blister popped. It was really, really painful. So those are my three worst injuries, three very outrageous things that I would say. Um, my favorite food, I love Italian pizza. Um, chocolate is my non-negotiable as well, but uh, Whitaker's just brought out, it's not a vegan one, but Whitaker's just brought out a ginger, like Bundaberg ginger cross with caramello. I have eaten, uh, I can eat that block within two days. <laughs> but it is the best chocolate that I've ever tasted. Number three, salmon is my other favorite food. Even though I eat plant-based, that's the only thing that I haven't given up and I I love it to be honest. Um, morning or night person, definitely a morning person. I used to be a night owl but I feel that at night time you just waste more time like you're watching videos or you're relaxing or winding down. 
Um, so if you get up early in the morning, you're just more willing to get up and go for a walk, get your business stuff done, get the hardest task done first. And I just really like that way of doing things. Um, I wake up at the same time every day, even on the weekends as well, usually. Introvert or extrovert, I'm definitely an introvert and get quite socially anxious still, <laughs> even though I feel like I've improved, but definitely very introverted and always feel overwhelmed um, in social situations and stuff. Um, my coffee order, I always have a soy flat white or sometimes I just get a iced latte um, with soy milk. If I ever do get a flavour shot, I'll get caramel or hazelnut as a treat. Um, my phobias, I've got the worst phobia that anyone would ever imagine. I'm really scared <laughs> of rubber gloves and latex. <laughs> so even I'll let them touch me at the dentist and stuff because I've got to, but I will never put on a rubber glove. <laughs> Um, beach or mountains, I'm definitely more of a forest girl. I love going for forest hikes when it's all shaded and it's just got this beautiful pass with all this deep greenery. Um, I hate sand. <laughs> I take my dog for walks to the beach, but um, only for the scenery, but I don't actually really like going to the beach apart from a few times a year, although it is pretty. Uh, the sports I did growing up, I started, I think it was both ballet and and athletics when I was five years old so that is why I do have very muscular legs um when you do ballet you're on your toes a lot and with athletics I was a 100 meter sprinter and my mum broke records for 100 meter sprints my dad um or just a little bit insight into my genetics my dad was also I think he came third in New Zealand for karate and he's got identical legs to me as well um so I'm very lucky in that sense but just not on genetics if you don't upkeep it then it still won't look the same so it can give you a great baseline but you've still got to work for it to look the way that it does so it's not just if oh she's got great genetics she doesn't have to do anything you still got to put in the work for it to be at its peak if that makes sense uh, so I did athletics ballet tap I ended up picking up jazz and hip-hop when I was um, older uh, netball rugby and then I did a few a little bit of horse riding and gymnastics as well so quite a few things if you are a parent or just a note to anyone I do find it so amazing like I really recommend for parents to get their kids involved in sport because it just helps with the growth of their body their muscles making their bones stronger and then things like that are just a lot easier when you get older because you already have the movements it's already kind of a second nature um, but it is about finding exercise that you enjoy once again. Um, so yeah, I'm very grateful to have been put in sports since I was five. Does your name have a special meaning? When I was young, I just remember this not too long ago. My mum found this book. I don't think this is the real meaning. But my mum found this book and she found my name in it. I don't know who wrote it. And it said Cassie meant confuser of men. <laughs> I just thought it was so hilarious. Like, where did that come from? My first concert and taste in music. If you follow me on social media, you already know my taste of music. Um, my first concert was Excision. <laughs> if you don't know who that is, it's one of the biggest dubstep producers. <laughs> the whole concert felt like 20 minutes and I was just up against the back wall, amazed. And it was just over with the flash of an eye, uh, with the blink of an eye. And then... With music, I love very heavy music. I find it very calming <laughs> and I love upbeat, really dance, like hype jump up music as well. I find it very energetic. I listen to that any time of day, whether I'm doing the washing or cleaning at the gym, driving to the supermarket, it's always the same. When I drove, <laughs> when I drove to Brisbane for the WBFF show, I, I realized when I got back that I literally listened to dubstep for 10 hours straight. I don't even know if people who love that music can even handle that. So it's a little bit intense. How tall am I? I'm a meter 57. My weight is 57 kg, so easy to remember. Um, fun fact, I've uh, my age 24 now and I've already had three name changes. So when I was born... <laughs> I was Cassie Mackey. <laughs> Sounds 
so funny. And then my mum got married to my stepdad and they asked if I wanted the same name as my little sister. So then I changed it changed it to Cassie Lucas. Um, so I was all of, I was Cassie Lucas throughout all of school. And then when I was a bit older, I wanted to change it to my real dad's last name. So now it's Cassie Hamilton. And Cassie Amber is just my first name and middle name because it sounds prettier, I would say. My choice of alcohol at the moment would be Pinot Gris. I was having mostly red wine for the last few years, but I've just found an Aussie it's very dehydrating because it's already so hot here. So Pinot Gris is very refreshing and I like the stronger flavor because you can't drink it as easy as a salve, so you just savor it if that makes sense. Um, if I go out for a night out, I usually buy those canned sparkling wines. They're usually pretty low in calories, like 130 and pretty low in sugar. And I prefer dry over sweet, but definitely a wine girl. I'll choose that over spirits any day. <laughs> My most embarrassing moment is that one day I hopped out of the shower and then I just took a nice like little video of myself in the mirror. I was just standing in the room, but before I got dressed, I took a video of myself and sent it to my boyfriend. And then I, <laughs> I accidentally went add to story. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would be everyone's worst nightmare. And I didn't even realize at first someone had to report it and take it down. And then I went into my messages to him and then I was like, oh, where's that um, video? I can't see it in the conversation. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And then I just saw this notification that your thing has been taken down for violating Instagram's guidelines. <laughs> don't know how many people saw it, but thank you to the person who reported it because that was an accident. <laughs> Number 18 is, do I want kids? I've always been very, not against children, but I just don't like children. I feel freaked out by them and they're very weird. I don't know how to talk to them and yeah, just not a motherly instinct. Um, but over the last few months, I've noticed a few times I've felt a little bit more open to it. If I see a baby on the TV or something, I'm like, oh, maybe I could do it one day. The whole time... I've always felt like I'd have them around age 28, 30. Obviously, it depends on your life circumstances, but I think I'm still undecided. It would just depend on what situation I'm in with life, if I've got a stable relationship, a house, uh, my business is thriving, so I could just spend as much time as I need raising it, and just depends on how everything's going with the world as well, because um, we are very overpopulated already. So, still on the fence, but I guess becoming more open to it for my later 20s. What diet I follow and why? Obviously if you follow on social media you already know this but I just follow a 90 to 95 percent plant-based diet and I've done that for three and a half years. I found it very sustainable. It changed my whole life. I stripped body fat, like I just stripped down all my body fat and built more muscle and it saves the animals and it saves the planet. Um, so I just don't see any reason why not to do it kind of thing. Um, I do plant-based holistic nutrition, so I'll link all my resources and meal guides and programs below. And number 20, if I could change one thing about the world, what would it be? This is related to my diet. When I made the change, I just couldn't believe the positive results that people could have, whether it's reversing their serious health conditions. Our planet is literally dying. And I can't believe the stuff that actually goes on in the animal agriculture industry. So that would be the one thing. Oh, it is the one thing I am dedicating my life to is just to make people more open to it. You don't have to be 100% vegan, but just try cooking more plant-based meals and just getting a bit more educated and learning about it and being more open to it. Because if everyone just made a bit more change than they currently are, the world would be a much better place and would have a much better thing to look forward to in the future because at the moment it is very very scary what is happening to the world so I already quit my corporate job and I already took up plant-based holistic nutrition so I can teach people about all of this my content is directed about all of this but I just feel so passionate about it that it's really like it's it's something's got to change otherwise 
the world will be a very miserable, miserable place. So I'll just leave that there. And yeah, thank you for watching this little Q&A video. I hope you found it funny and I hope it made you laugh and give a little bit more of an insight into who I am and what I'm about. So if you want to see more, hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you for the next video. Thanks. <laughs> Oh,